Hi, this is Thomas with Believe in the Run. This is Robbie with Believe in the Run. And this is Megan with Believe in the Run. And you're listening to The Drop. Robbie, that was fun. You just did a finger gun. I'm going to start doing more finger guns to the camera. All right, just in case you're listening, (laughs) you just missed. Like, Robbie did a really cool move. It was like we were going through it. Yeah, there it is. It is. It's almost like uh, like 1990s radio. Yeah, it's like a really <laughs> oh, I can cool do, move. <laughs> I could do one of our sound pads. Uh, that would be the best. Yeah. Do 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 do. Need to put. We could pre-program that into this machine. I would like that. I would not. Okay. We'll see. See what happens. Finger guns don't kill people. No. Robbie's deadly. I don't know. We'll probably get flagged on YouTube for that. Yeah. yeah. Not not just kidding. Do you see? Sometimes we get recommendations for. All kinds of like gun content. Oh, Do we really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Which is weird. Actually, I watched one of them. I think it's just because we you watch one where it's like we blew up this like it's like we shot a grenade into this lake, and mm-hmm. I'm like, well, I'm gonna watch. That. <laughs> <laughs> well, I watched one because okay, so we kind of share a YouTube channel because it's Believe in the Run. Yeah. So the suggested stuff that you see, I see. So I saw there was like this one gun that was like. It's like, it's why the CIA, why the, uh, what's the governing, the tobacco firearms? Oh, uh, ATF. And why the ATF hates this gun. Oh, and you're going to clear I'm like, I got to see why. Yeah. And they're like, it's not a handgun and it's not a rifle. Yeah. It's like, no. And then it just, from, once you click on one, you're done. Yeah. You're suddenly, before you know it, you're going to the outdoorsman show. And uh, uh, for a while, we are the <laughs> Shane Gillis fan club. <laughs> yeah, which like every like, video pops up. Just because you li- watch one podcast. Anyways. Yeah. All right. This is a running podcast, though. Kind it of. is. Kind yeah. of. Not kind of. It is. We okay. talk about the running of shoes, the running of togetherness. Well, mm-hmm. and this episode is, again, sponsored by um, the Golden Trail series, powered by Solomon. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um, it's a new trail series, right? I think it's new. No, I think it's been around for a while. Or they it's, added more events or something? It's been around, but it's, I feel I think like, it's gain, gaining traction. Okay. And yeah. we're excited. Robbie and I are going to go out to Tahoe. We're going to hit them trails. Yeah, you guys are doing the Broken Arrow Sky Race, which is the second event in the series. Robbie, um, are you going to do the full, like, what was it? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Like, you, uh, it's you, kind of my life. We'll it, see. Is it the 50K? Um, so there's, there's a ton of options, which is partially why this, um, series is so exciting, but specifically at broken arrow, there's an 11 K a 23 K a 26 K and then a kid's race, which Thomas, I just assumed you were doing. Isn't I might, um, if I speak, wait, isn't there a longer distance than a 26? I thought there was like a 60 K or something. No, I think that's, I don't know. I need mad. You know, like we were talking about Dunkin' Donuts and Matt Damon. I need the Matt Damon from Goodwill hunting to figure out these distances. Yeah, because it's so you don't know case. Yeah, it's Kelvin. I don't do that. Well, you do five case. <laughs> you can do in ten case, so you can just extrapolate. Uh, yeah, but then it's. I mean, I can, but I'd rather not. I will say that it's the whole thing. If you I'd rather not, if you commit to the long one, and you want company, <laughs> the, yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll suffer right. with you. Anyways, we're doing the we're doing the race. It's it's a family. It's like a weekend affair. Yeah, lots of family fun. Plus, um, okay. you get to we'll we'll be doing somewhat of a special believe in the run hang. Yeah, yeah. If you're out there, you need to come. Yeah. So anyway, we'll be sharing a lot more details once we finalize if, them for that weekend. But if you um, want to learn more and register for any of the series, any of the events, you can go to goldentrailseries.com. dot com. A lot of people have asked me how can I hang out with Robbie's mustache in the wild. Have how many more than one and you know uh, when what's are you end? ever watching are you ever watching instagram and someone's like <clears throat> i get this question a lot and you're like no you don't yeah but then, like but a lot of people are asking me here's the thing though we do that too because we'll be like everyone's saying that we need to do this about the podcast podcast it's like two people on youtube <laughs> feels, we, feels a lot yeah but it does seem like a maybe lot. that's why i recognize it when i hear people be like that like they're <laughs> getting on instagram they'll be like a lot of people ask me all the time, how to stretch before I'm like, nobody asks you, you want to do a reel about stretching. Yeah, that's accurate. That is accurate. You're like, what can I pick video myself doing today? Speaking of people saying stuff, let's just get, get it out of the way. Let's okay. do it. Cause we, uh, people were wondering last week why we didn't mention anything about Kelvin. This was maybe over 10 comments too. So everyone. this actually was a lot. So Kelvin <laughs> tipped them, which is fair. It's a fair, request or a fair uh i don't know comment i guess yeah. yeah but i think 
I mean, I don't know if you want to say how you feel, but. Well, I, I, what I found most interesting about our response as a team mm-hmm. was that we we're all in alignment. Like, I, I don't think one of us was like, here's how we should handle this. I think all of us were a little bit when it first happened, you, you know, it's a celebrity thing too. It's like, it is just, it's content for some people. Like they post a picture of them, they do the thing and it's for whether it's for likes or to express their feeling of a sadness that someone passed away, it just doesn't feel necessarily genuine. Yeah, I think, you know, like we posted a story right when it happened. Yeah, a story reposting like the news, the news, like, oh, this is sad. And I think you said like, just no, yeah. like, no, this couldn't happen. Um, but then... It's like right after that, you see everybody posting all kinds of content around it, um, whether that's pictures with him, just other yeah. stuff. And it's like, I'm sure that every obviously everyone feels terrible about it. But then it's just this, it's almost like when news stations, they don't care that a person died in a car crash. They want, they just want to get the news Tune out. Tune in at 11. Like be the first to get you, yeah. that news yeah. out. And I feel like that almost applies to just, everyone these days and i don't know it just feels like it just feels weird to me i it also wasn't like intentional for us not like we didn't say Mm -hmm. hey let's definitely not talk about kelvin on the last podcast we had discussed it in the office and i think we had like you know talk about oh yeah like how upset we were and like the whole situation and i just didn't feel like something to talk about on the podcast at the time, but it wasn't like we were like, let's definitely not mention it. Well, I think too, and this is where maybe people don't understand is that we, even though we are like believe in the run, we're, it's kind of like, we're all just personal. (laughs) Like we're just people. Whereas you'll see runners world or Nike. That's like a corporate type thing. And it's like, we all process death or news in our own ways. Um, I mean, personally, I don't really like to be too, like, upfront about that kind of stuff. So, um, so it's just like also how we react on a personal level is how we react on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> and, and let's we were we were at an event this past year that Kelvin was at, mm-hmm. and would have loved to have met him, mm-hmm. and not because he's passed away. I would have loved to have met him because I think he was yeah a phenomenal talent. But we were so busy with appointments and running around that we never, not one of us, got a chance to sit down, take a picture, do anything with Kelvin mm-hmm. yeah. at this event because we were focused on doing what we do, which is covering mm-hmm. gear right. and stuff like that. And so even in this this post, like while, yes, we interview, we've had Ilya Kipchoge on, and I actually think it would be different if it had been someone that we had spoken with. Yeah, and like gotten to know some a uh, more personal relationship, I guess. Yeah, like Kelvin. The only thing I know is his time. I was yeah. in Chicago when he broke the record, so I was like, "Oh, that's cool." I know that he was at the the running event, but I really don't didn't I don't know. Yeah, him. And I don't, and that's why in the so I did write about it in our weekly email last week, and that's basically what I said is that like. Obviously, it's a great, a tragic, like an unfathomable, unfathomable loss for running and for sport, sport. Because he very well could have been the greatest marathoner of all time. It's like you, everyone is like, "What if?" It was looking that way. Yeah, and so, and I think that's obvious. Like we all, everyone knows that it's obvious. And but I feel weird commenting when everyone just focused on the sport part and nobody thinks like, this is also somebody who's like a father, a father to two children, his, um, his parents, it was their only child. It was the only one his mom could have. So like, and you just think about these other things that I didn't see anybody mention, you know, it's no, because at that point they're almost like a cartoon character. It's like, mm-hmm. this is what you know about them. This is all that is presented to you. Yeah. So it's like a very one dimension right. uh, image that you get. My question is that all of us were saddened by the news. It, it's tragedy whenever ever this happens. Mm-hmm. But when you started seeing multiple posts on Instagram 
And, you know, whether did, did, did a part of you not like feel uncomfortable? Like I started yeah, feeling uncomfortable. No, it, it did feel uncomfortable. And that's why I felt like even in a way I just want to distance, but like, I don't want to be in that. <laughs> I just want to distance myself from that, which is, you know, maybe not commenting on it, you know? And I don't know, I guess that's just for some people, that's fine. Some people take issue with it. It is what it is. We're never going to be perfect about everything. Well, what I'm curious, like I am kind of curious on the response that we got for not saying anything. Mm -hmm. I am curious, what do, why do people feel like we need to be? I, I guess maybe. Um, like yeah. what are they looking for from us? I guess it's just because we're a trusted voice in the running community i guess people just want to hear that affir affirmation yeah, honestly maybe. i think it comes from a good place like people want oh, to hear our yeah, thoughts on it it's sure. not like a negative thing i think it was almost like a disappointment on their side not like mm -hmm. an anger on their side yeah but i'm just curious like what what could we say or do other than say our condolences to his family yeah. and, and to the people that uh loved him and ran with him and worked with him and yeah you know that kind of stuff what 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 else can we say? I mean, that's pretty much it. So, if you didn't read Robbie's newsletter last week, go read it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's yeah. good. Thanks. I don't know how you can do that if you're not subscribed to the email. Can't you just put a link in the thing? I've oh, yeah, always maybe. said that we should just have a page that you update. And it's like a running. We can put a link in the like notes. your weekly, okay. like your weekly. Yeah. Okay. Thing. I mean, okay. Anyway, yeah, I I truly felt. Um, saddened uh, by the events but i i felt sad in the way that i would feel if anybody yeah passed away i'm sure that the same you know when pre uh passed away it seemed to leave a, a large ripple because of the mm -hmm. unfulfilled potential and i think that from a fan of the sport it's the unfulfilled potential that is um saddening for for a case like this yeah but yeah there's so much it's like i i hate to diminish someone's life by just being like hey too bad that the two hours right and it, yeah. i know and there's, and that, there's that thing it's like thing. is it just for me like is that a selfish thing like i want to see that happen or is it do i really i don't know it's just like a whole thing like yeah. i feel like just and death in general brings out a whole for me personally so much to think about that yeah i just rather not i just rather internalize it and not comment on it but yeah anyways so that's just me all right how do you, how how do we spin out of that into uh, our normal goofy stupid stuff i'm sure we can find a way very quickly all um, right. so running wise what's been Let's just jump into other running, our running, yeah. since this is a running podcast. All right. Well, I had some highlights this week and some low lights. Let's hear them. Ah, uh, jeez. So low lights were got some highlights in your hair, dude. I don't know. Frost bring a frosted tip back. <laughs> <Yeah, but, yeah, laughs> that's highlights are just gray hair. Um, yeah, same, the, um, same. Yeah. But yeah, so the week was really weird. It was like I have to say, like I working out with Castor. I felt like I was on a really nice streak of strong training. And then I went into this week and, and one of the only times I've ever, I, I can't even remember the last time I've done this where I just quit a speed workout. I was just like, oh, really? I, I, I'm not, it was like last Wednesday. I was like, I'm not on this. I don't have it. I just don't have any, like I had no motivation to finish. And I think I was just really tired and just the paces just seemed really hard. And I was just like, mm -hmm. this isn't it. So I, I quit on that one. And then the rest of the week, the stuff felt kind of like not the greatest. And it wasn't until this weekend you and I went running. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, things have felt so hard. But that run, I felt like went really, really well. It, we decided to go on. We had 18 miles to do, and we coach said, make it hilly. So we made it hilly. Yeah. And Robbie and I went together and it was a beautiful, it turned out to be like a beautiful day, even though it was like, that was awesome. A little on the <laughs> chilly side and everything was good. We're running. You want to tell anybody? I, what I happened? honestly, I don't even want to. I just hate talking about it. Like seriously, I, I, mean, I, I, have couldn't, you ever, I couldn't believe it. I was just like, I, I I'm going to guess that Robbie sprained his ankle. Yeah. 
I mean, it's the same one in Orlando, which, to be fair, I have not let it heal. I've just kind of like, because I'm like, we'll take four day, three or four days off, and then I'm like, eh, it works. <laughs> like, I can move my feet. And then, it was a weird thing because we're just running, and then we're, I, I heard like somebody fall. Yeah. <laughs> it was Robbie. And <laughs> it, it was, he was only like a foot or so behind me. And I was like, well, what happened? He goes, what do you think happened? Yeah. <laughs> but like, was there a hole or something? It was, we were not on the sidewalk. We were on like a road without a shoulder, which, and there was, and I was literally thinking this whole time, like, as soon as this car passes, I'm jumping over the sidewalk. And then the car that was like in our lane, I jumped into the grass. Like, as soon as I did that, that's when it happened. Like, good snow covered grass, you know? And um, and then I was just like, I mean, have you, you've probably been a while since you see me like that. I have not, I couldn't, or t- ever. here's what I did. <laughs> I really am not good knowing how to uh, <laughs> react to people. So I just decided I should say nothing <laughs> and let Robbie do his thing. Cause I couldn't tell if you were m- like angry, mad, mm-hmm. sad, mm-hmm. Check. Just distraught, all, all the above. like, and I was like, "This is not a time for me to give advice or pep talk. I'm just gonna stand here and." Yeah, no, it, you did a good job because I like I didn't know what like I felt like if I said, "Hey, you know, maybe I'll yeah. do this or that." No, you just need to agree with agree with the statement. <laughs> yeah, uh, like I was. Oh man, I would, yeah, I just want. To, there's nothing punchable around. Otherwise, I probably would have put a hole through a wall. Uh, <laughs> like, I was so angry. Yeah, and but it, you managed to finish the run. Yeah, but, like, I'm just, like, I'm just, like, I honestly, should I just quit running? Like That's the vibe I was getting. Like, it was like actually quit. I thought maybe he was going to take off his shoes, his clothes, and just lay in the street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like uh, Ricky, Richie Tenenbaum. Yeah. <laughs> it's over. Yeah. Yeah, when he, t- when he gave up tennis. Yeah. Yeah. He's given up. Um, I could, but you know how after you sprain an ankle, you can run for a little bit um, before it I mean, gets stiff. I was like, do you want what Uber? Because I'll wait with you for an Uber. Because, like, we sat there for five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, do you want, I'll wait with you for an Uber. If you want to try running, I'll try running with you. I mean, I just ran, but it's like with my right leg, pretty much. You can't put much pressure on. So anyways, I did. Do you know what that saved us from, though? What? Think about this. An Uber, uh, me paying money for an Uber? Yeah. No, think about this. What? Oh, is that the only reason you <laughs> take an Uber? I mean, that's, <laughs> I'd rather. Do, yeah. <laughs> I'll crawl before I'll pay for an Uber. <laughs> pretty much. Okay. No, um, think about this. If you hadn't twisted and we hadn't waited that time, we would have been up at that corner when that car jumped I, the. I did think about that. Jumped the corner, so. That twisting of the ankle may have saved your life. It might have, because there is, uh, what, like a mile later or something, mm-hmm. a car pulled in front of another car. I was, I was in another lane, and they drove up one of the curb. Oh, wow. Like not just drove up. It was like, it was it it was like pretty yeah. fast. What's, yeah, yeah. What's going on in Baltimore? Did Thomas show you the picture I sent him? This <laughs> truck just in the middle of downtown just. No, I didn't. Like send ran that. straight I told over him about the it. light he pole. He told me about it. I didn't see it. Yeah. I'll show you the photo. Um, but so, anyways, yeah, that was, and it's just this thing where, I, it's it's obviously been happening more frequently, and because of holy crap, that's insane. <laughs> well, nice. Oh, that's right at the exit. Yeah. Yeah. That is, yeah. Uh, liquor store. Um. It's been happening more and more, so obviously I had to figure this out because I really will just stop running because every time I gain any traction or feel good during training or marathoning or during a race even, it happens, and it's like I can't. I thought, like, oh, I'll just watch the ground more and just keep, you know, be more aware, which I have been doing, but it's like literally if I just take my eyes off the ground for a minute, it could or a second, it could happen. Like when I – so I played basketball – and I twisted my ankle really bad in high school. Like I came down on another player's foot and I was shooting a, th- a three pointer. And when I came down, I came up down on the defender's foot mm-hmm. and my foot just folded sideways and my stump hit the ground. Yeah, I did that. I've done that playing basketball before too. Yeah. And it took forever and I kept retwisting it 
and you know it was just a nightmare but i would wear i had to wear an air cast and then i wore like a neoprene sleeve for years Mm -hmm. i like all throughout college i wore like a neoprene uh, ankle sleeve yeah what about one of those yeah i mean i i hate wearing sleeves it just feels I just hate the feeling of it, but, but if it means you're not rolling your ankle, yeah. I mean, so I mean, just I, for a little. I while. mean, just to this morning because I was I'm going on a run with the dude from Neck Deep. Uh, Matt, Matt, I've thought of something I want. I want to make you guys do. do. Okay, <laughs> All right. you know how he always does those high kicks. Uh, I want him to teach you how to do a high kick. Okay. I'm gonna video your effort. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pass on that one, especially in the current situation. <laughs> but I actually just taped my ankle. I could this probably morning. get Carl to do it. Yeah, but I, I at, right after the run, I texted Annie Neuror, the who was on the podcast. Yeah. I was. Do like, you have like a direct line to her, like a red phone that you pick up? <laughs> I, I do. Be, yeah, <laughs> I do. And unfortunately, she doesn't take my insurance though, so. It's kind of a, I can't get actual uh, physical therapy. What size shoe is she? <laughs> she No, that's, she's the same size as me. That's why I have a, I give her the shoes for access to a direct line. Um, so I, she gave me a few exercises because I was like, you yeah. just please, I, I swear I will do them. Like, just give me like a handful of things that I can do. Did you have to buy any rubber bands? Uh, I have those at okay. home. But I've been, I mean, in the last few weeks i have been trying to implement some of that stuff like standing on one leg kind of like doing calf raises that kind of thing just starting to do that but you know it was this the one that i busted in orlando it's just that's also the one i rolled in new york city uh i think the beginning of grit last year you've only got two of them so you're either rolling one or the other yeah but it's i feel like my left one's like that's the guy the worst one yeah um anyways so so i'm kind of just I, I hate like I'm I'm so mad right now like we're talking about this I hate I actually I don't even like talking about it because like you don't want it to be your character yeah and I don't want to annoy like uh, people listening or it's just like the same shit every week it's you hear the same thing it's it's like I would be annoyed if I was listening <laughs> to this honestly I mean the good news is that we finished up that run and I felt and it was 18 miles it was 18 miles it was nice and I mean, we kind of cruised through it, considering how many hills there were. Yeah. I think we cruised through it very well, and I felt great afterwards. And then uh, on, I don't know if you ran on, I think you did run on Sunday. No, I didn't run. Uh, I haven't run since. I, I ran on Sunday, and uh, I felt I felt fantastic on Sunday. It was like one of those things go. where it was like, yeah. oh, these extra miles just feel good and rounding off. I think I had eight miles on Sunday. Wow. And it was kind of like just rounding off the week with a positive note from yeah. what was starting. So we, I thought I saw a picture of you doing a trail run with a bunch of people. I wasn't with them, no. They did it. I didn't do it. You, I wasn't there. You're like front and center. It's on the Fast Bastards photo. Did you see that? Dude, I wasn't. That's probably someone else. Yeah. And did you have There's no way. On? There's no yeah. way I'm looking it up. I, mean, I can't I'm wait op- to I can't I'm, wait to see who it actually is. I'm open to bets right now. It's probably I, Mac. It, it might not be you, but that's it's the crazy not, thing. It's not, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Unless the AI stuff is happening. I need I need facts. Here we you go. You need glasses. That's not you. What is what run is that though? That's the CDL run. Oh, that's ZDL? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was Friday morning. All right. <laughs> People gotta tag me when they're putting these up because yeah. I don't see them. Anyways, but that's it's a Stephanie, I think, posted that one. Okay, yeah. All right, first check in. Hey, the one of the things that I realized about this past week with my running was how much I enjoy it when I just kind of let go. And we're so concentrated on, you know, what our pace is or what we're trying to achieve as a goal. But sometimes when you're just running out there, you know, like a golden retriever just face to the wind, just kind of going, it makes running a lot of fun. And you remember why you're doing this and maybe why it's fun to be out there and not so concerned with like ending the run as quickly as possible. So if you're out there right now, relax those shoulders and just enjoy the run. Like maybe don't even think about your watch. Look off into the horizon, see something beautiful up ahead. So yeah, I didn't run the rest of this weekend. I just painted my kitchen. Nice. What color is it now? Like, uh, it's called whitewash oak or something like that. That sounds pleasant. 
When I was a kid, uh, one of my friends in his house, they had mustard colored walls in their bathroom. Mm-hmm. And I think they were going for a fall theme. <laughs> so they wanted to do like oranges and browns. And yeah. Like dark greens. Uh-huh. But they did handprints. Oh. All over the walls. Nice. And I kind of teased him a lot because it looked like I said, your family's so poor you can't afford toilet paper. Yeah. Cause Wait, because of the uh, his walls. That's were, actually funny. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean they weren't they weren't from the <laughs> Yeah. But yeah. So that's a, actually it was I, I brown. Think, yeah. Was it brown handprints for real? There was brown and Dude, orange that's awesome. handprints. <laughs> I was like, yeah. You, yeah, you're I opening leave the that door. For I was that. look. I was in sixth or seventh grade. Oh, I would still say that. Yeah. Um. Remember, spon- remember when sponging was a thing? Yeah. Like, my mom definitely did that to one of our our bathroom walls. I think. Oh yeah, we did that. Yeah. I had like like all of our bathrooms had that. Yeah. Ugh. The nineties are crazy. Yeah. And at, like there was like wallpaper where like trim with apples on it. <laughs> Like, you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, a runner, like the runners <laughs> yeah. at the top. You know what's crazy about that? Like, if that if Instagram had been around back then, you would have seen someone doing a reel about, like, it's so easy to do. Cut the sponge in the shape you like and then right? slap it on the wall. What's, so what's that thing now that when you look back, you're going to be like, that was really dumb that people did that. Oh, there's so much yeah, on Instagram? It's, it's weekly. Like, literally 80% of it. Yeah. 80% of the feed is like, what are you doing? People taking ketones. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, probably that will be a the thing. Get ready with me. Or- oh, the get ready with me. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> the, the have you seen any good ones, Robbie? No, 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 no comment. <laughs> the um, I okay, think- so uh, I will say, just like anybody in any group, I, I think that there is an internal communication mm-hmm. chain. Yeah, where if you see something, it gets passed see around. See something, say something. Yeah, yeah. there might it, in between this group of three people. <laughs> We might have shared some Instagram posts of people getting Dude, every, ready. Or, everyone or, does. I will say when we were talking about that with uh, Herm runs. Yeah. Alex Hermanson. And he was he's saying, he's like, yeah, sometimes I like people's posts that are that I don't actually like. And then that Flaubert dude made a reel of it. That was that was funny. That was the best. <laughs> you know, I, I, I Flaubert did like a um, he took like a film camera and actually shot. Some, uh, I believe it was Hoka's, uh, with a film camera. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was really cool. Oh. I, he might be somebody that we should have on the podcast. Yeah, he, he's cool. Because I don't know much about him. Like, he's definitely more. The first time I kind of registered with him was when he did the reposting of the Herm Runs. Yeah. Yeah, he's good. yeah. So, what's up, Meg? How are you doing? Yeah, what's your running like now that you're back in? The mix. I feel like I've actually had a couple of good workouts under my belt now. Maybe the fitness is slowly coming back. Today was one of them? Yeah. I had 10 1Ks, which was literally, I was losing my mind on like the eight. Would that one. be a 10K? Yeah, but you know, there's breaks in there. So, yeah. um, but Saturday when you guys were gallivanting, I agreed to pace our friend Kara for her mm-hmm. workout in my, in my 18 mile run. Which was interesting because we went out for our friend's birthday Friday night. I actually texted her Friday night and said, this wine tastes like I'm not going to make it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I forgot about that. Yeah, I, that's, Robbie saved me by texting me and being like, are we still doing this run? <laughs> um, but I woke up the next morning and I was like, I got to go do this because I'm going to regret not doing it. So anyway, went out. Um, we started running with the Faster Bastards and then we went and did our own thing to, so I could um, pace her. And I got to tell you, there's nothing more inspiring than watching someone work really hard in a training run. Like, cause on race day, I get it. There's people watching, you're going to go all out. But when you're working really hard in a training run, like there's just something super inspiring about that. And she freaking crushed her workout and we had headwinds the entire time on the back half of the workout to the point where I was like just get behind me and like I will try and block wind as much as I can which is like like doing nothing 
But like, and she just, she stuck with it. And it was, I was just like, this is, it's just so inspiring. If that is inspiring, sometimes I do need pacing. (laughs) (laughs) I can, I can work hard. Trust me. (laughs) I can make it look horrible. (laughs) (laughs) But it like, it wasn't like a walk in the park for me either. Like, especially because I, you know, made it harder than I needed to. Did you find any coins or anything while you were running? Oh, we didn't. No. Oh, okay. Were we supposed to be looking for them? Yeah, I, I got you know, when you run with Robbie, you turn around, and you're like, "Where'd he go?" And you see him like, "I got a quarter, <laughs> dude. A quarter. That's it's it's nothing. been a, a dry spell recently. So if I see a quarter, that is getting nothing is up. more inspiring than seeing someone stop and pick up a quarter. <laughs> Slightly different, but I get it. And I found someone's bank card. Cha-ching. That's free money. Well, is it? No, because you're not going to do anything with it. I mean, Robbie's got one of those little like handheld computers that will decode like <laughs> yeah. what your pin number is. No, I did try to. I did try to report it to the like call the number on the back, you know. And there, I was on hold for like ten minutes. I'm like, they'll figure out that it's lost. Like, what am I? Yeah. Gonna okay, ask? so will customer service get better with AI or worse? I would have to think better, but. Worse than better. Yeah. It's a little, it'll be a transition. Um, wait, what was I going to ask you about the, the training run that you did? Um, With Kara? Yeah. I don't know what I was going to ask you. What was her pace? How, what was the distance? What is she training for? Uh, th- I was thinking of something else. Kara's but... doing the BNA half. Um, so this was in training for that. Okay. We thought about doing that one, but we decided to do Annapolis because it's hilly and we're training for Boston. Yeah. Which I guess that's coming up kind of soon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not too far away. Huh. I'm, I'm in denial a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. About Boston? About, oh. that, it, that it's not, like, I'm like, we still have time. No, we don't have time. It's going to be <laughs> terrible. <laughs> well, it was weird because Caster's note this week and when he sends training on Sundays was like, we're in the thick of marathon training. I was like, how? Oh. We have plenty of time. Are we? <laughs> well, that, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that is the thing. Like, her directions from Caster are a lot different than my directions. Yeah. It's like, you just keep plugging along. <laughs> <laughs> Megan's like, all right, we got to get down. They're going to do the 10 K's one. Two. Thomas, the tank engine, yeah. just choo chewing yeah. along. Um, I was going to say, by the way, I reached out to the Manta people yeah. with that mask that. Oh yeah. Yeah. I've gotten ads for. Uh huh. And was like, yo, do you want this to be reviewed for runners? Really? Yeah. Did they say? Reply? They responded. Would you say yes? I think I'll be wearing a Manta yeah, sleep mask. I like it. Should I get more than one? Uh, I don't know. Sleep masks make me feel like I'm I'm dying. I feel like right. They're terrifying. You put them on, you're like, well, I'm, this is it. This is what it looks like. Oh, dude. If I okay, and it's like claustrophobic. What about those That's, tanks yeah. that you can? Float and saline, and that you're supposed to hear. Absolutely nothing never. Oh, the sensory deprivation yeah. things. I want to do one of those. They close that door, and I will panic. Same. I'm not. Right? A, I don't want to be. You don't want to hear your blood flowing through your a, veins. What if they never let you out? You'll, you'll, uh, you, dude. You know, if I'm around, I'm going to let you out. Uh, no, I, I was watching the Mr. Beast video where he was in a coffin for a week, and I'm like, I don't know how. Like, he opted I would have in been, for that? I would have been Wait, uh, he, 10 minutes a mile. He couldn't move? So it's it's like a larger one, so there's a little bit of space, but not enough to sit up or anything. Just like like, like this this deep, like a okay. two feet deep and like eight feet long in a square. And he was, I think, I can't remember if he was allowed to turn off the lights inside or not, but he was in it for a week straight. Like Who, who was in Mr. Beast. What did he do for food and water? He had like meals ready could, to eat or whatever. Like, I couldn't that do that. Type of thing. That's did stupid. he have a TV or anything? He's, no, no phone, no TV, nothing. And he made it a week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like a TV I don't know. He's basically <laughs> he's becoming. Yeah, I would have like a iPad on. <laughs> yeah, flat screen on the top. Is he David Blaine? <laughs> he's becoming honestly the stuff he's doing is, be, is starting to get into the David Blaine territory. Uh, he's running out of stuff to do. Yeah. I get it. But I mean, I would lose my mind. Yeah. <laughs> Easily, I don't do. The coffin, <laughs> coffin flop thing. I don't know if you couldn't, like, when you can't tell time anymore. So, they interestingly, they had a, for people who already saw this, I'm sorry, but it is actually a great entertainment value. So, the they had a guy on who lost a challenge, another Mr. Beast challenge, like, last year or something, 
and he had to go through like seven um like what you're most afraid of things like so it's like traditional fear of heights fear of drowning things like that and uh so he got to the one where it was like they basically did the same thing but he had to stay in it for a day except they don't tell him how long he's in it for and he if he taps out before a day he loses all the money but if he stays in after a day then he's good but they don't he has no idea how long he's been in there oh. So they won't tell him, hey, you've been in there a day? No. And then he, whenever he rings the bell is when he comes out. But so he ended up, he was so nervous he was going to tap out short. He stayed in for 36 hours and he only needed to be. <laughs> See, that's just mean. They should, they should just. And he lost it. He was like, I literally can't take this anymore. I'm going to lose yeah. my mind. But yeah, that is, I don't know. Man. What is, okay. So what is one of your fears? That's my biggest fear is the claustrophobic, okay. like. So buried alive type there's, thing. There's been a couple times where that's happened to me that I can't get over it. When I was a kid. Oh, um, your brother. Yeah, sat on a wicker basket. Oh, dude. Nope. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? Those like ones that, that look kind of like a foot locker. Yeah. He sat on I couldn't get out and I couldn't extend my legs or my arms. So yeah. I was like kind of in the fetal position. And so I was like spazzing out trying to like get out of it. And I couldn't get out of it. And that one pretty much almost had me lose it. And then one time I got tangled up in a sleeping bag. Oh, yeah. No, Megan, you think it sounds crazy and you're laughing. Like my, <laughs> it was, it, does. it, it was it, <laughs> like my, I think like, like either my arm had fallen asleep or something. And so like, I was like struggling and I couldn't use my arms and I was like trying to get out of the sleep. You're bag. suffocating and you're yeah. overheating. Yeah. And then when I was a kid, one time I came up, I was swimming in a river. Uh-huh. And I came up underneath a raft. Oh yeah! And trying to like get the air. Dude, I've done that. that. The, the boogie board when you like get through a wave and you start tumbling and then you try to go up and the board's like suctioned to the water oh, and you yeah. can't get up. Yeah. Do the washing machine. Yeah. I. What time? This isn't quite the same, but it was really annoying. <laughs> People are running right now and they can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> They're like holding their breath. No, I. Breathe. When I was. At my, my parents' house when I was still living there during college, I had a room that was in the basement. And if you have a basement room, there's no windows. It's completely dark. Great for sleeping until 2 o'clock. Uh, not great if you are at the bar and you come home and you fall asleep. And so then you wake up and you're kind of like a little Where hungover, like have to piss like crazy. And I couldn't find my way out of my room. I was like... <laughs> Like it was before, be on their before cell phone. So I was like, <laughs> I literally thought I was just going to like piss my whole bedroom. And you, dude, if you're in your room and you can't get out, I was in there for like five minutes, like trying to find the door. And <laughs> Robbie like, created his own escape room. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I still remember how much that sucked, dude. It was one of the worst five minutes of my life. I don't know. When I was in college. Because how do you explain just peeing all over the floor? Oh, I, when I was like, in college, your parents. I had a, uh, a girlfriend who got up in the middle of the night after a heavy night of drinking. Mm-hmm. And I started hearing this noise and I like wake up. I'm like, she was sitting in the corner of my room peeing behind my, at that time there was floor speakers. Yeah. <laughs> just oh. squatted peeing next to my floor. I'm like, what are you doing? I mean, I've been hammered so many times like that, but I've never, and I have friends that do that same thing. But I've never once been so drunk that I, I just... Couldn't taste that piss, chicken. <laughs> just, yeah. Just piss somewhere in the middle in a suitcase or in, like, my, my friend always would pee in his own suitcase. That's weird. And um, then he would use the suitcase? He had to wash everything. But yeah, everybody would be like, yeah. you smell like urine. Um, anyways. <laughs> so my biggest fear is definitely claustrophobia. I'm not scared of, like snakes or insects or things like that i know what about you megan i have a guess at one of them well claustrophobia though is really up there like that's like can you imagine terrifying like if you're in a tunnel or something and getting buried in a tunnel where you can't move no dude it's (laughs) that's what i'm saying yeah i don't even like talking about it earthquake Stuck under rubble. The other one's sharks, though, obviously, because they're. Oh, that's one of your biggest fears? I thought you were. She loves them, but also fears them. I love. Yeah. Like, it's a a weird, like, I want to know everything about them, learn about them, 
curious about them, also absolutely terrified of them. But this is a crazy thing to me because you learn about them, you realize how small the chances of you getting attacked. Yeah, that's why I avoid the water. So there's zero (laughs) chance. (laughs) You can't get eaten if you're not in the ocean. Uh, I would say 99% of the attacks do happen in the water. (laughs) Right. Or sometimes like on a, boat. a small river because a tiger shark will just meander up small there. Small river. Where? In the in the Mekong it Delta? It happens. It happens. <laughs> in Vietnam? <laughs> no. There's plenty of stories. Yeah. Uh, plenty. You always hear that in the Chesapeake. Yeah. yeah. Have you, Has there ever been a shark attack in the Chesapeake Bay? I don't think so. Right. Yeah. You can swim in that all day I long. used to all the time when I was a kid. Until you got yeah. afraid of sharks? No. Okay. So I think the shark one is irrational. Do you have an irrational fear? Uh, I mean, just like, uh, like an in Indiana Jones and the rats are everywhere. I don't think actually living in Baltimore, not too irrational. Um, but I don't think, I don't think I have any irrational fears. When I was a kid, the basements, <laughs> dark, <laughs> dark basements, like, like that there was ghosts or monsters down there. There's just something, there was somebody, something, something was down there. Yeah. I get that. Pure evil. But when you were a kid, right? Yeah. That makes I mean, sense. Dark places. Up until like my twenties. <laughs> this is why I think your there is your DNA carries memories because how is it that it's intuitive just to be scared of dark places from the get go? Because or, you can't see. Or well, certain, I, I do think it's a sens- it's a sensory thing. Yeah. I think that you're biologically we are set to realize we are at our weakest moment when we can't use our eyesight. Yeah. No, I'm that makes sense. But you also are just like why do snakes and spiders scare people just from without any experience or encounters with them? It's just well, first the, they the, move unnaturally. <laughs> yeah, I know that's why, but why? But why? Why, why is it unnaturally? Why is it? It's in nature. It is. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Like, but those are dangerous things for the most part. Like trees move unnaturally when the wind blows. That's they weird. can't chase you. Yeah, they can't crawl on your face. But how do you know that from like the moment you're born? That's what I mean. I don't think you are afraid of those things the moment you're born. I think if you put a snake in a baby's crib, it's not going to freak out. Not at all. I did see a a video somewhere like on Instagram where a a dad was playing fetch with their dog and he threw a stick and it's like a two-year-old. It went to grab the stick and just picked up a black rat snake and is like (laughs) (laughs) waving it around to throw it to the dog. That's like, no, no, no. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you're right. You're right. You yeah. don't know. All right. Second check in. I hope you're doing it. I hope that right now you're just in the zone, feeling your body move. You don't care what the pace is. You just like the flow. Just let the shoes roll up underneath your feet. Let the arms swing. Let the breath happen naturally and just cruise. All right, Meg, we're going to take a little break for our sponsor here, and uh, it's still winter. It is still winter, and we are still drinking Element. I like the hot stuff. Yeah, so they have this whole new chocolate medley. It comes with chocolate mint, chocolate chai, and chocolate raspberry, and um, you can put them in your coffee. You yeah, can make and we them just on talked about Robbie drinking hazelnut coffee. Yeah. So, like, I have to say, like, if you want to flavor your coffee, I'd rather put this in it than have hazelnut coffee. And I kind of like the chai one the best. Yeah, me too. For sure. That's definitely my favorite. Um, So yeah, if you want to try this chocolate medley, you can head over to drinkelement.com slash the drop. That's spelled L-M-N-T. Yeah. And um, they're going to give you this sweet bundle. I think you get something free with it. Definitely like this eight count sample pack with any purchase. So go ahead and uh, snag some. Yeah, stay warm. Oh, Meg, the thing I was wanted to talk about that I was remembering was when I was painting my kitchen, I was listening to a podcast about uh, like adventures or whatever people who've like it was like the one guy who facilitated the cave diving rescue of that Thai soccer team. Yeah. And then there was another guy who was an SAS guy, which made me think of your dad, who is also in the Royal. Is it called the Royal SAS or is it just Her Majesty's Service? OK, right. I don't know. That's a what, no. The um, SAS stands for something though. Yeah, it's oh geez, my mom's gonna be yeah, mad at special, me right now. Special, there it is, special air service. Special air service. Yeah, because it's like that's basically the equivalent of the seals in the U.S., but in in England. Yeah, I, would say. I think 
there's like the SAS is like even more hardcore. Like they they do like all of the things. Okay. So yeah, he, he was describing his training and stuff like that. And I was like, wait, but doesn't your dad have a book about it? He wrote several quote fictional books. Dude, I need but, to read that. Yeah. I keep meaning to. We'll give you a copy. What's the, the black? Do you orchid. remember the title? The, yeah. The original one he wrote is the black orchid. The black orchid. Yeah. Dude, yeah. That sounds rad. So it's also based, so Megan's grandfather was, like, this is crazy because Megan's father was older, and then her grandfather was, like, Yeah, so my dad much was older. a mistake slash maybe not his parents' child. Okay. TBD. <laughs> so, but his dad was also in the military, mm-hmm. but, like, we're talking, what years, like, we're talking pre-World War II. Like, crazy long ago. And World War II. Yeah. And so is it, did he have a pen name or was it his own name? No, it's Ian P. Murray. Oh, okay. The author. I'm going to find it. Well, I'll just bring in the book. Yeah, we can get it. Okay, copy. cool. Yeah, that's exciting. Anyways, I was I was thinking about that and I'm like, man, there's probably so much stuff that I don't even know. Like one of my friend's dad was a SEAL in Vietnam. I'm like, dude, like, and it, he has all these. Well, that like, was back when they were frogmen. He has all these like sniper awards. I'm like, can't mm. even imagine. But <laughs> that's why my my dad was always like, he was always the like the last one at the party telling the stories because he had like hundreds of thousands of insane stories, and so the whole everyone would just be captivated like listening to him uh, tell yeah. talk about crazy stuff. Man, his thumbs would fill your eye sockets. <laughs> yeah, I believe it. Like you should have seen how but they were like hammers. Jeez. Yeah. Anyways, that's cool. Legends Legends of the Black Orchid. Yeah, there you go. Ian Murray. I like it. All right. So um anything else that's oh, I want to talk about the polls that we had recently because we didn't really talk about them for Instagram. Let's, Let's it. hear it. So I did ask last week, do we need to buy the Duncan tracksuit? And not as many as I thought yet said yes. So I'm going to say that's a no. So okay. 66% said yes. Well, that'll save us some money. Well, also so, they sold out, so it's too late. Okay. Yeah. We could probably get bootleg ones down at <laughs> Dude, I'm for sure. Lexington Market. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm saying we just, maybe maybe we get new team ones for, uh, to get them made them up. Yeah. Okay. Get like jogging suits this year. Um, And then another thing was, I did ask what's the best way to drink coffee. Mm-hmm. Because of my... I tried a new way this today. Did you? Yeah, I used a ceramic travel mug instead of our cheap toss-away ones. Uh-huh. And either our coffee machine is not making the coffee hot enough. It's so hot when it first comes out. Because, like... Really? I don't think the ceramic thing Did you order the one that I told you? No, I'm not ready to make the commitment. Come on, just do it. I'm going to buy it for you for... When's uh, your birthday? Oh, it's already gone. Yeah. <laughs> You got a whole nother year. I'm not going to buy anything for you. <laughs> you got to wait. Um, unless it's a holiday. And you missed Valentine's Day. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> what other gift giving holidays? Uh, going on? <clears throat> um, um, you've got a ways. I mean, obviously there's a lot of people who are like, you got to drink it black. Someone did say Haz- they're with me on the hazelnut. So <laughs> one, who one was person. that? Was that Kimmy? <laughs> Katie Carlson. Yeah, Katie. Shout out. Uh, I would like to know uh, demographics on Katie. I, I need to know where <laughs> she lives, how old she is, yeah. the, the works. Yeah. Uh, but then someone said from the Yeti I found on my run today, that's a score. Whoa. <laughs> Thomas is out. Yeah. <laughs> You're not drinking out of a Yeti you find on the ground? No. Like, here's the scenario that would go through my mind. This person really had to go to the bathroom bad. They only had a Yeti in their car. They peed in the Yeti and threw it out the car window. Yeah, that's the thing. And then you're taking, oh, look, my coffee's delicious. I mean, you've heard of soap, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't trust it. All right. Uh, so then, I speaking of which, you know how many piss bottles you see in Baltimore? Yes. Like the in Deer Park water bottles? Yeah, yes. All the time. Like, I'm always at least Deer Park bottles are using less plastic these days. I, true. I'm always so confused. First off, it's hilarious because every time my kids are like, "Is that pee or is that <laughs> lemonade, lemonade <laughs> or whatever?" And I'm like, "It's always pee. Yeah. Like always." 
It's uh, and what was that movie where it's like if you see gum on the ground, it's, oh, that's elf. elf. It's oh, not yeah. free candy. Yeah, <laughs> but he, but I'm always, I don't understand the thought press process. Just get out of your car and piss on the closest wall because nobody cares in Baltimore. Yeah, and I'm just, it's so difficult. Trust me, I know from experience to piss in a Deer Park bottle in a vehicle. That it's just wouldn't be worth my time ever. You think that's the that's what's happening? It's someone's peeing in a car and then tossing it. Oh, for sure, because okay. it's always on, on like in a curb or like alongside the road. My or, commute with the boys is an hour in the morning. Yeah, and there was one time where I may have had too much coffee. Yeah, and I was driving back, and I was coming up on a road that is traveled very highly by trucks in in our area. Mm-hmm. But like I just I I couldn't take it anymore, and I just jumped out. Cracked the, the door right, and stood Stand. stood between the door and the car. Yeah, the flying V. Yeah, the, the flying D. V, <laughs> and, and just went. And I, I have to say, even if someone is see me because there was cars driving by, clearly, right. I think people realize if you've made it to that spot, yeah, that you get a free pass because you just, also love to wait until you are so uncomfortable. Like he goes from, does this happen to you? Is this like a male it thing? He goes does. from zero to 60 no, where it's like, same. he'll be like, walk. And then all of a sudden he's like, oh, and there's like, there's no time. And it's just like, how did you get here? Kind of the same. How did you do this to yourself? Did, didn't did you go, did you go on a, on a run on Saturday? Yes. Okay. I <laughs> seem to recall you just going somewhere random. Yeah. That there, I don't care. Like when we're on a run, yeah. I just pull up a leg and. Okay. Um, but yeah, I would say. I just don't understand the logic of the Deer Park water bottle. At least use a Gatorade bottle. Give yourself a little bit. Or of Or if I if I was in the industry, yeah. I'd be like, look, people are using these to pee in. Why don't we make the mouth a little wider? Yeah. Well, when we were in the band and we didn't stop on the road, we would just use beef jerky bags, which I think I mentioned before. Oh, wow. I don't think I knew that. It's actually like the best case scenario because <laughs> the opening is so wide that yeah. – you're good. That's actually a good idea. And I then just, it's I'm going to keep beef jerky in the car. <laughs> the bag is so thick that you're, you know, and then you zip it up. Wow, but that smells great. That combo. Just don't open it up. Yeah. And what, how do you, do you still eat the jerky? <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> you save the desiccant for. <laughs> it's very oh, salty. So gross. Very salty. Yeah. How did we get here? Uh, Deer Park bottles. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, I don't remember. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we were talking about someone found a Yeti cup on this, and Thomas was there saying, it is. There "Yeah, it is." But yeah, there's a lot. People have very diverse opinions on drinking coffee, as you would imagine. We did over, I think, in the fall. You know, the company Mir. Yeah, they make this. Okay. Uh, they like pitched us on gifts or whatever, and I'm like, I don't know what to do with this stuff oh let me know we could get, like how nice would it be to do uh well believe in the run mugs for they had like pour over gifts to people they had like no not not gifts to people just as a for review or gift guides oh. or whatever you know you know oh. in just yeah, yeah, november yeah. when everyone's pitching their gift guide yeah. dude you're the biggest dude of i love trail running and having a fresh like didn't you guys make us yeah like, but it wasn't the bugs it was like actual kettles and stuff yeah. i'm like i don't know how to work this into it oh is this one of those companies thing? that has like the jet boil stuff? Yeah, no, they just have really nice, like, look at their pour over, like, really nice pour over gear. I would like a pour over. So maybe, well, yeah, I know. I'm just trying to, this is a way to justify it. We can say, look, on the podcast, we'll experiment with ah, um, I coffee like, I products like where you're going. to see how it works. So I ended up giving you a bag of beans. Have you tried any of that coffee yet? No, because we had, um, we, Someone else had given us a bag of beans, and I just used the last of that. So I'll use it. This, so I'll use your it house week. has to be like one of those like beaneries that you go into, like a coffee place. Uh, it's not. That was just random. That that things lined Ooh, up. White Oak Cafe. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, like it. Does sound good actually. <laughs> what is porigami? Porigami. Yeah. That's is that it. A company or a new trend? It's, it's the mirror. I'm looking at their products. It's probably a foldable. Uh, uh, pour over. It says, finally, you can enjoy good coffee anywhere. Embrace the trifecta of the award-winning Mir Poragami, the world's smallest, most durable, and portable travel coffee dripper. Yeah, it's Whoa. a fold-up coffee, coffee dripper. dripper. Yeah, you put the coffee in it, and you pour the hot water over top. This is a lot. Yeah. It's like basically alchemy for coffee nerds. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Turning 
I mean, that went regular through, water into gold. That definitely went into like a very high period of time of like coffee snobbery. I feel like whiskey did that as well, and it's kind of tapered off. Yeah, the whiskey was in, was another annoying one, and I, I was IPAs. I was in there with the whiskey stuff, but I, I'm pretty sure it's just like with wine or anything else, dude. If it's a twenty dollar bottle of wine versus a two hundred dollar bottle, you don't know. Yeah, you that's don't. the thing. It's like, <laughs> unless you're, I maybe if you're a sommelier, but like if you're a general person just who drinks wine, there's no way. It's been proven. There's no way. I, th- you know, the power of suggestion is really good. I feel like when you go to like Napa. And they're like, this has dried raisins, chocolate, yeah. and fall leaves. Yeah, you're that's like, like the atmosphere. Like I feel like it tastes better when you're sitting looking at a vineyard and the sun is shining. And versus it's in the back alley in Baltimore, <laughs> and you have a bottle out of a bag, <laughs> Carlo Rossi jug. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I, I think. That, I mean, that's all part of it, right? The whole it sensory yeah. experience. It but has to be part of it. I think that's even comes down to shopping. Like when you go to like a high end store and they tissue paper wrap, you fold your shirt and put it in tissue paper and then put it in a box and then hand it to you. And, and then like, you open it and there's a bandana in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or a napkin. No one yeah. knows. You still don't know. I what's mean, going on. That's the nicest napkin I've ever received. <laughs> Do you know I can't even is? use it. Yeah. It's on my desk. Cause I'm like, I, mine is still sealed in the box. It was mailed in because I know I saw Megan's, I saw yours. I'm like, Mm. Until I know what this has or to do. Or are you going to re-gift it? Oh, that Great. would be a major gift. Like, Jarrett, get yeah. him all excited. He'd, be, he'd put it next to one of his cause statues or something. Jarrett would get excited about that. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. He'd be like, this is limited edition. Nobody gets this. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. Should we talk about a shoe? Yep. I finished watching The Bear, by the way. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Is that the second the season? Uh, yeah. Okay. Am I right about the second season or am I wrong? What, what was your thing? I didn't enjoy it. I, I stopped watching. Wait, you stopped watching? I did. I, I like. I was real into the first season. Loved it. Second season, I started watching. I'm like, mm, I don't really love this. I one. think the first few, I, it definitely picks the last three. The last three or four are way better than the first half, I felt like. Okay, so maybe I just need to power through. Yeah, because there's like, did you get to the dinner, the Christmas yeah. dinner one? That one was awesome. It, it, and stressful. It, it is, but yeah, it was super stressful. Did like, you watch it, Meg? Oh, He's, okay. He started watching the second season without me and then said I wouldn't like it, so I didn't even. <laughs> okay. Well, Meg doesn't like stress. Yeah. Does yeah. anyone? I guess you guys do. Mm, it, it's like a, It's like watching a horror movie. You don't love. No, watch I it hate for, horror movies. Okay. Absolutely hate <laughs> horror movies. You're proving a point here. Um, but they, yeah, I felt like it got better at this because there's like a backstory an episode for Richie, who's my favorite character, the cousin. Who is going to be, he's going to be, I think he's going to be a bad guy. Or no, he's not going to be a bad guy. He's a, He's going to be in the new Fantastic Four movie. He's going to oh, be okay. the, the a, thing. Okay. He's a great actor. I really liked him. Yeah. And then, and then they, of course, they opened the restaurant. So there's a lot of stuff around that. But I thought it was, I thought it picked up. It was good. All right. Maybe I'll have to re reevaluate. Yeah. Meanwhile, um, we're watching uh, The Bachelor. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah? Yeah, 10 out of 10 for that one. <laughs> <laughs> and who's the guy who does the songs that we like? <laughs> but, um, it starts with an M. And so there's this one guy who just kind of yells and puts beats underneath of it. He has like a million followers on Instagram. And he's, he's kind of funny. And I'm like... He's was, on the show? No, but I was just about to tell Meg I was getting sick of him. I'm like, I think I've had enough. And then he did a song about Bachelor... And it is, it's amazing. Uh, he's like ridiculous. Not um, Bo Burnham? No. Oh. No, he's a guy who's like, uh, he'll have like, he'll just set up his DJ stand someplace. Like in and the And then public call somebody and, up and he'll be yeah. like, what, do you, what, do you, what is your dream? And the girl's like, I want a car. He's like, <laughs> get Megan a car. Get I Megan think a I've car. Seen, I think I've seen this guy. Like, doo, 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 doo. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see. Okay. I know who you're talking about. I've seen it on Instagram. Okay. So he did one about The Bachelor, and it was, hmm. it, I was like, okay, I'm back in. Okay. I don't remember his name, but yeah. we'll figure it out. Is it Mark? 
Are they handing out flowers yet, or is that? They do that every episode. Oh, I thought there was like one or two before they don't. No, Dude, so it starts out. Sing- that's how you make it to the next episode. Is you get single handedly keeping the flower businesses alive. Oh, I believe it. Yeah. Yeah. Because do they have a discount code for flowers at the end? No, but they should. Neil Lang <laughs> Come <diamonds>. on, people. <laughs> Seriously. <Yeah. laughs> that's, a, that's an easy one. That's you know how one. nice it would be like if you're in a committed relationship, but you show up and give your girl a rose. <laughs> oh, dude, do you ever listen to the radio? Like it's just on maybe in your car and you hear the the thing where they trick cheaters into buying flowers for their... Uh, I haven't heard this since the 90s, but I do remember. <laughs> they still do it, that which blows my mind. Well, how do you? How are you so dumb? That's what I mean. Do you know what I'm talking about, Meg? I, I feel like I do. It's where the But I don't listen to the radio, some, so I have Someone heard will call into the radio station and say, oh, I think my boyfriend's cheating on me. Can you, like... Do the flower trick. Yeah. yeah, so they call him and say, hey, this is so-and-so from, like, coolflowers.com. Can... We want to send... We have we're a $75 yeah. credit we're, to just send to anybody you want. We're doing this promo and it's free. No, And they don't, don't send it to the girlfriend? Yeah. So then they send so it like, oh, yeah, I'd like to send it to Chrissy. Say, like, love you, babe. And you think it's real? Like, they're not like. And oh, it's the, real. Up. And then the the woman who's getting cheated on goes, oh, my God. Because <laughs> then after they say they're going to send it to the girl, she's on the third line. She jumps in <laughs> and it's like Maury Povich. And the guy's like, what? Uh, yeah, this sounds like what's that show that used to be on Jerry Springer? Yeah. yeah. Well, that was all fake, which is disappointed. That was out. all fake. <laughs> Apparently, oh. you're not the father. Yeah, I think some of the I think those might have been real. Those but, were the facts. But like the when it went really off the rails, yeah, yeah that was all set up. Yeah, talk about uh, like you said, like you will watch a horror movie or something like that, mm-hmm. or or a stress. Like watching those really was, I didn't watch that. I uh, like The Bachelor because it's about love and it's a lovely story. It's sort very about easy love. to watch. It's yeah. about, about cat fights. There's some <laughs> of that too. <laughs> anyway, I don't know why, but I like when that show comes on, I'm like, I feel above all those. Like I'm picking out, oh, that one, yeah. this one, and that one. Those, those are my picks. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> you know, we can patch in third lines into this board we should maybe start up a running cheaters segment on our podcast we'll send free shoes to (laughs) your running partner like no obligation necessary we're doing this thing with charm city run (laughs) (laughs) here in baltimore yeah we're gonna send you and uh, a friend uh, for a weekend getaway and free shoes (laughs) and this and that oh dude people would who do you want to take get in on that for sure Mm. all right final check-in after the run, you can check your pace, but don't do it. Don't don't get sucked into that. How's it going to be? How's it going to look on Strava? How's this? It's going to be what it's going to be, and it doesn't matter. If you're having fun and enjoying the exercise and being out there, most of the time, the reason why we're doing these reviews for shoes is we want to give people the best experience that they can have in the sport. We want to help you find that perfect match for you that will make running fun, make you want to get up, lace your shoes, and get out there. And if you're so concerned with what's going to happen on Strava, how people are going to interpret your run, how you're going to interpret your run, like did you run fast enough? Did you run slow enough? If you just concentrate on was the fun, was the run enjoyable and was it fun, you'll get back out there again. And I guarantee you progress, staying healthy, having fun, you'll naturally move up to where you want to be. All right. All right. I guess we should talk about this Hoka Mach 6, which, by the way, this is the one without a plate. I have a feeling I was talking to someone who reviews shoes, Mm -hmm. and they told me they couldn't feel the plate. And I said, I think you're thinking of the Mach X. I could see how it's a little confusing. Did you tell them why they couldn't feel the plate? Yeah, I was like, there's no plate in this. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, if you're not familiar that Hoka... Any X in the Hoka name designate denotes a plate, then uh, you could be confused. Yeah. But, it, I mean, it is sort of confusing that they have a shoe that's called the Mach. That's what I mean. Six and the Mach X. Which looks like Mach 10 if you use Roman numerals. Except then- for now I'll have a two next to it, Mach X2. <laughs> I was really waiting for one of you to say ing. <laughs> <laughs> Mach. <laughs> ing. <laughs> 
If I could go back in time to any, no. moment, to any moment in my life, <laughs> it would have been that. Not the birth of your child. No. The missed opportunity. I remember that. Want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? <laughs> yeah. Would you two shut up? Okay. Anyway, so this Mach X, or Mach, <coughs> sorry, 6, I just screwed it up now, comes with a super critical... EVA foam. Which is new because last time it was a dual density foam. So you had like an EVA paired with like a super critical style foam. Yeah. Uh, comes with a bunch of rubber on the outsole. Which on the last one, it did not have rubber. Oh, that's outsole. right. That's good. Because I think that was some of people's complaints was durability. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Thomas's favorite Creole Jacquard. Is that how you say it? Yeah, Jacquard. Jacquard upper. Unless you're from Central PA, then you call it Jackard. Jackard. I like that. Which I think is how I first called it when Jackard. I came here. Uh, I mean, yeah. I lo- actually... You jag off. As much as it's embarrassing to say something wrong, like mm-hmm. say that you're going to La Jolla and you're like, hey, have you ever been to La Jolla? You know, um, yeah. It, once you learn it, you do feel more sophisticated. And then that meme of those guys standing on the balcony looking down at other people. Uh-huh. You're like, it's Jacquard. I think someone, this weekend I heard someone making fun of a friend because they said archive, like archive. Mm. I'm like, that's exactly how you should say it. Yeah. yeah. It's just how it's spelled. Some idiot decided to start ca- saying to drop the H from it, and then they ruined it for everyone. Well, I used to say frustrated. Well, that's that's just dumb. <laughs> yeah, that's on you. <laughs> but you know how some people say Target? Instead of Target, yeah, like as a joke, and yeah. like I call Chipotle Chipotle, yeah, because that's what it looks like. <laughs> True, yeah. Tor- Tor- Some, I think you can just say things these days, and it's okay. And then that's how it ends up becoming that word. Is <laughs> yeah. that enough people who start <laughs> exactly listen to a podcast and start calling it that, and then it spreads throughout the world? All right, <laughs> so let's get to the shoe, though. Let's get back to the shoe. Okay, it's got a gusted tongue, a very simple but nice jacquard upper. Um, I really like the the underfoot feeling in this one over the last one. I would agree. I, here's what I, I think that if you like the last one and for some reason you don't like this one, I think what you have to think about here is probably the brief of what the shoe's supposed to be. And I think that they executed on what it's supposed to be. It's a very lightweight cushion, but not extreme cushion. Like this is not like... It doesn't feel like a super high stack of cushioning. No. But it's just the right amount. It feels really light on the foot. I love the fit of the upper, which I think is going to be bad news for some people. It's fine for me. It was? Yeah. Okay, because I have a narrow foot with a high arch, and this one feels more like a a fitted shoe. I think the upper was just dialed in perfect. There's no heel lift. The padding around the collar and ankle feel good. This is one of those shoes that I put in the same category with some other up-tempo daily trainers. Like I would say this goes against the Rebel V4 and the Asics. Nova Blast. Nova Blast. But the Nova Blast has a higher stack. But it's just that really simple midsole. Like it's just good foam. Mm -hmm. So you have a good foam midsole, simple upper, simple outsole, and it does the trick. And it feels light on the foot. And I, I'm i when I'm doing like 8 to 10 miles in these, I still feel a little bit of bounce in the shoe. So I don't know. I like it. Uh, How is it different than the past version? Well, the past version had the New dual foam density foam. And rubber on the outside. Well, I meant feeling like feel wise. Um, it still kind of maintains that same feel, the same vibe that you'd want. It feels a little livelier to me. It feels like the like you get a little bit more of a okay. give and a bounce. Okay, that's fair. Than the previous one, which didn't feel as lively to me. What I thought I liked about the Brooks Tempo back in the day, uh-huh. this feels like when they did the update to that, I thought it would feel like. Okay. Has that really nice super critical foam. I also felt reminiscent towards some of the old Skechers Super critical foam shoes. Okay. And I've always said, like, if somebody else designed the sketches stuff on the same foam, right, that it would yep. be a hit. 
For sure. And I feel like this shoe is going to do really well. Um, I'm kind of curious, like, I think we need to do it between two shoes, between this and the Rebel, because I feel like they're very similar. But the foam, it's interesting that the Rebel is a Piba mix. Piba blend, yeah. I wonder what that blend is. Though. Yeah, that is my curious. I've I've got almost 100 miles on the um, New Balance Rebel, and I'd say that I still enjoy the shoe, but the foam doesn't have the kind of resiliency, the bounce that it had when it first came out of the box, where this one is holding up really well over the, I don't have a hundred miles on this. I have like 30 and, but okay. the, the foam itself seems to maintain this super critical foam is maintaining oh. some bounce. Okay. And the, so just as far as the stats, it's $140, which is the same as the last version. It, the stack height is 30. Four. Wait, what just happened to my shirt? Thirty-five, thirty is the current one. Uh, and same as the five. Right. Um, wait, the current one? Oh, for women it's thirty-five, thirty. For men it's thirty-seven, thirty-two. Oh yeah. But the, it's it might look different on our reviews because they used to just do midsole only. So it says in our review from the last version, it says twenty-nine, twenty-four. Um because they just started this year listing all their stack heights. Yeah, it's so, so annoying. Yeah, because people are confused with even shoes. So like, explain what you're saying. When they're measuring stack height, what are they doing now? So now it's outsole, midsole, and insole um, or sock liner. So everything that's under your foot. Yeah, everything under your foot, which is is how it should be. Yeah, But at a certain point, like, yeah, there's right. like a... It's like 10%. Yeah. As World Athletic measures, I think it's 12% inside from the back of the shoe. Yeah. So, and the same from the front. But the in the past, Hoka and other brands do this too. So it's very confusing when people look at midsole stacks because not every brand does it the same way and they do it for different sizes. And so this, uh, Hoka used to do just the midsole. So, and I think Brooks did the same thing. So if you, you would see something like the Clifton and it's a 32 millimeter stack height. Right. Well, that wasn't accurate, it was more 39. Um, and then what's really confusing is for the shoes like the Rocket X2, uh, they have like updated it in some places. So like in their spec sheets that people get or so one person get, would be like, it's this stack. But on their shopping, like on the shopping side, on their website, it'll say the low lower stack and note and everybody's like, well, what's the real? It's the higher one. Is the real one? Yeah, and that's a, that's a good point that. For you as a consumer, you're going to feel everything underneath your foot. They might as well measure everything that's underneath your yeah, foot. Yeah, and I forget the reasoning or like the logic behind it. New Balance. Well, it's also interesting because imagine, you know, how uh, some shoe companies like Speedland or even Tracksmith, they have these really thick insoles, mm -hmm. sometimes made of Piba or whatever, yeah. that you pull out that can be 10 millimeters thick of right. material. So if you only did the midsole, yeah. You'd be like, oh, that's a, you know, 20 millimeter right. sag. Yeah, that is the case for some shoes where it's like extremely low, even though that's not the case. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think New Balance does it for like some of the, like the fuel cell line. There's like yeah. some they do measure it that way and others they don't. It's very, very confusing. Do you have, do you have the weights on this, Meg, on that sheet? It's this, I think it's the exact same as. Yeah, six, uh, a, a men's. 10 was eight point. Well, so what's weird is they measured a men's nine last time for the I, Mach 5. It might have been the 10 last time too. I'm not sure. But in their spec sheets, it says men's 10 for this year. So yeah. Yeah, which is 8.2 ounces. It was 8.15 for the nine last year. And Thomas's 10 and a half from last year, because I just pulled it up, was 8.5. So it's pretty much the exact yeah, same. Yeah, it's about the same. And it feels light. It feels lively. I, I really like this shoe. What would you use it for, Meg? Um, I mean, I know we put this in the up tempo category, but it's just, it's not something I'm going to go like fly miles in. I feel like it's fine for like, I really enjoy it for my, when I'm doing double days, like my four miles in the afternoon, because my legs are a little bit fresher. I'm moving a little bit faster, but it's just like a shorter distance. So what was the longest distance you did in this year? Uh, probably 10. Okay. That's probably yeah. 10 was maxed out for me as well. 
And it's and it still works for that. It's just my preference would be to maybe use it for like some shorter runs. Yeah. So yeah, I think that when we talk about running shoes and we the up tempo and daily trainers for me, it's kind of blending together because yeah. the cushioning is good enough in the lighter, faster shoes that you don't have to switch out to be like one or the other. And well, the, and you're saying like this is a lower stack shoe, but for your men's, it's a 37 millimeter lower, stack. Which I, is, I was saying lower than the than the stack on Nova Blast. Oh, four, which is I think 41 or 42. Because to your point, like this, these quote up tempo shoes now have so much foam underfoot that you can use it for daily training yeah. and lots of miles. And yeah, I do think it's going to be interesting when um, a lot of people who are like thinking shoes have gotten too cushioned mm -hmm. and they're going to, some of the shoe companies are going to be releasing shoes that aren't as cushioned. I'm interested to see if it's a nostalgic thing that, or that people think mm -hmm. they want that or if when they get that option, it'll be interesting to see if people actually purchase yeah. that stuff. For me, this is about, this, this stack is about perfect for daily training. And just a nice cushion. I like that it didn't have a plate so that my foot could kind of relax a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you definitely get that prioception uh, in the shoe. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I feel you. That does seem like a perfect stack height. I was, when I was Googling the just like basically weak ankles issues, trying to figure out like on Reddit, just Wankles. seeing. Yeah, just seeing like chronically weak ankles. And a lot of people were saying, you know, switch to a lower, more minimal shoe, which makes sense, lower stack height, less rolling. Less chance of flipping. And I'm like, am I entering my my Vibram five, <laughs> Vibram five fingers phase right now? That would be amazing. Please don't. I mean, I do think it would be really hard to... Naturally. To twist your ankle. For sure. In a shoe like... Like a zero drop shoe. Yeah, because if you if there is if you're Not in a higher drop, stack shoe, just zero stack. Yeah, if you're in a higher stack shoe you, and you reach a tipping point, you're <laughs> you're going over the edge, like, and it's more like you can roll it a thirty five millimeters further down. Touch Why? Yeah, but that's Why? like just taking all the fun out of your life if you wear no. Because the fun shoes. would be that he's not on the curb. You're yes. saying barefoot runners don't have fun? Absolutely not. <laughs> you they never have see them zero smiling. fun. They um, are literally hating life all of the time. You know, it would be interesting though, Robbie. <laughs> maybe ma maybe mix it in once a week. Um, yeah, I'm I'm not a, against a it. shorter distance or something. Yeah, I like this. All right, zero shoes. Hit us up. I'm in. Or don't. <laughs> Steve Sashin, if you're listening. Um, all right, is that everything? Yeah, we talked enough today, I think. I'm wow. good. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, so that's yes. it. Uh, do We don't have to, do, we didn't have to talk about it. The thing will run in the middle, right? I just, yeah. last thing, are you, jaws or size update, we're still going with still the going training strong. plan? Still All going right. strong. Today is an on day too, so I got to do some reps later. Okay. I was hoping <laughs> that you gave up so I could use yours. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> You could sanitize that, right? Yeah, you could. It's just, oh. just rubber. Does it actually mold to your mouth, though? No. Just oh. get a bouncy ball and chew on it. It's the same thing. It's a dog toy. I don't understand. <laughs> Why don't you just get get one? And, what if and I got one of those bones? We could work out together. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, if I got one of those dog chew bones, like the squishy, you know what I mean? Yeah. The squishy it's the same one? exact thing. No, yeah, it is it's not. Thing, right? It's not the same. You should start going to a the Kong gym. A Kong ball? You should start going to the gym and just just chewing on that Kong ball. Get a gym oh. membership to Jaws or size. Yeah. Yeah. Ask Merrill if they have any classes. Merit? For, for, or Merit for. Uh, I'm looking for a personal trainer. Yeah. Oh, what are you interested in? Mostly Jaws or sizing. <laughs> <laughs> we should start a. You said you should. We could work out together. We should start a meetup for Jaws or sizing. We should. We'll meet at the need, Patterson Park. You're going to have to make it anonymous because no one's going to show up. It'll be amazing. And bring, we'll, bring your yoga mat. <laughs> You won't need to learn sign language so we can talk to each other. <laughs> you can talk to her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hate this so much. All right. All right. Um, that's good. That was a good update. Mm. Glad to hear it. People are loving it, man. People are, yeah. All right. Cool. 
thanks for thanks for listening. Hi, mom. All right. See you next week.